Having looked at both major types of sequences, we are now turning our attention to series. The first will be the arithmetic series. So to begin this, we're going to look at some terms and definitions. First, a series is the sum of the terms of a sequence. So if you can take a sequence of numbers and add all the terms together, then you have a series. Now, series comes in two different types. First is a finite series, which is a set of numbers that has both a first and a last term. Now, some series have a beginning but without an end, and those are the infinite series. When we are dealing with arithmetic sequences, they tend to be both uh, be of the type that are finite. So we look at finite series for arithmetics. Geometric sequences, on the other hand, and when we turn them into series, some are finite and some are infinite. So we're going to have to look at both when we look at that lesson next. But for starters, arithmetic series. One of the most famous problems in mathematics that illustrates this is the story of Carl Friedrich Gauss. Now, in the time of Gauss, his teachers would often set the students to a routine task to keep them occupied so they can get things done. Gauss's teacher asked all the students to find the sum of the first hundred natural numbers. While that way, the teacher would be able to sit off on the side, get some work done while the students labored. And what they had were small pieces of chalkboard, and they would do the work, erase, and then go back and start again. And what Gauss found was that when he began to work on his sums, he noticed a pattern that if he's adding 1, 2, 3, 4, and continued on all the way up to 97, 98, 99, and 100. Now when he began to add these items together, 1 and 100 made 101. 2 and 99 made 101. 3 and 98 made 101, 4 and 97 made 101, and that it constantly had this pairing system. So he said, well, if I need to find the sum of all these numbers, it's going to be the first plus the last, we're going to call that A sub N, and then what we do is we take however many entries there are and divide it by 2 because they will always pair up. So in this case, and it's the sum of n items, so the sum of these 100, it would be equal to 100 divided by 2 times 1 plus 100. So that would be 50 times 101 and was equal to 5050. And he took his answer up to the teacher in less than two minutes. The teacher was sure he was wrong but checked the work and the total was correct. So this formula generated by Friedrich Carl Gauss is a very helpful method for quickly finding the sum of a set number of items in a series. So, how can we apply this? Or better yet, how can we shorten this up so that we do not have to write it out such as this, where we have a very long chain of addition? Mathematicians have developed a shorthand method for finding a series, and that is called sigma notation. Sigma is a capital the one that we're used for this is a capital Greek letter. And what we have is looks like a capital E. At the bottom we have our variable and then we have bounds. So n equals start
to end on top of some rule that we're going to take. And what we do is we start subbing, substituting in the end values from the beginning at the start all the way through the end and add the items together. So in the case of Mr. Gauss, what he had to find was the sum from n equaling 1 to 100 of n. What that comes out to is 1 plus 2 plus 3. And we continue to enter in all the integer values that we can for n until we reach our last item. And then we add them together. So using a combination of the sigma notation and Gauss's formula, we will find our first value and our last, and then figure out how many pairs of values that we have. Let's take a look at what this would appear. So write a sigma notation for the series. Sorry, had an extra E in there. Negative 5, 2, 9, 16, adding all the way up to 268. So first, let's write the rule to generate the sequence. So a sub n equals n sub 1 plus d, or a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. In this case, our first term is negative 5. And our common difference, how do we move from negative 5 to 2? 2 to 9, 9 to 16, it's always the fact that we are adding 7. Times, now we need to figure out how many entries we had. To do that, we're going to begin with the basic formula that we have available and substitute in values that we know. In this case, the key part that we're looking for is how many entries do we need for this 268. So 268 is equal to negative 5 plus 7 times n minus 1. Solving for n, we're going to add 5. So 273 equals 7 times n minus 1. Divide by 7, we have 39 equals n minus 1. Solving for n, we add 1, n equals 40. So 268 is the 40th entry in the sequence. So sigma notation gives us the sum from n equals 1 to 40 of negative 5 plus 7 times n minus 1. That is converting it from a chain presentation of a series into sigma notation. In this case, using Gauss's formula, we would take our first, our last, add them together, and multiply by 40 divided by 2, or 20 entries. But we're going to compute the sigma notation of n ranging from 1 to 70 of 5n plus 3. So in order to do this, what we will do is we will come out with s of 70 equals 70 divided by 2 times our first entry, 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3 is 8, and our last entry, 70 times 5 is 350 plus 3 is 353. That is equal to 35 times 361. And multiplying that together will give us a product of 12,635. So find your first and your last and multiply it by half the number of terms of what was used to generate the series. Sigma notation is a good tool 
and is very useful. You see it often in math, especially when it comes to statistics. There's a great use of sigma to help shorten up the work and notations. Look over the parts of this series presentation and be ready to use these items, especially the sigma as you move forward in mathematics. Our next stop is our last area of study for this unit, and that is going to be a geometric series.